It has been six months now since the discovery of around a thousand businesses in the city, including 12 apartment complexes that were operating illegally. Yeah, Rosanna, and it doesn't reflect well on the Camellia Bowl or the city of Montgomery. It was almost as if the bowl staff just wasn't prepared this year compared to years past. There is a Republican supermajority in Alabama's legislature, so it is those Republican priorities that we expect to hear most about this session. WSFA 12 News has the latest details now in the pandemic. Today, President Biden implored Americans to resume wearing face masks indoors and to get vaccinated or boosted as soon as possible. A lot happening, Mark, here at the Alabama National Fair. Look how good you look. Sh it was a Sally showered in the last 15 minutes and made it back hair dry, new shirt. You can see the kids are participating in what they call a stick horse rodeo. The kids out there able to experience those 14 inches, if not more, of dirt, which will be where all of the action happens tonight. This is WSFA 12 News at 6. A new vision for downtown Montgomery. The city and Chamber of Commerce today released a new point-by-point -point plan to grow the economy and increase tourism. The last 20 years have seen considerable growth downtown, but city leaders say more can be done to help Montgomery compete with other southeast tourism destinations. They call it the Envision 2040 plan. WSFA 12 News reporter Ashley Bowerman is breaking it down for us tonight. Ashley, there is a lot to talk about here. In the outdoor space. It does Talk sound like a lot of original ideas, some exciting ideas. Ashley, thank you so much. If you want to read that plan for yourself and even comment on it, it is available right now at the Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce's website. New details tonight from the U.S. military. At least one Alabama military installation is among several in the southeast that will be getting a new name soon. Just hours ago, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin announced the upcoming changes. Now, as you know, the department has been reassessed military base names along with monuments and other paraphernalia that commemorate the Confederacy. They're determining whether those should remain. Here in Alabama, we've learned that Fort Rucker, named for Confederate General Edmund Rucker, will now be renamed in memory of Chief Warrant Officer Michael J. Novacell Sr., who you see on your screen. Novacell, an Army pilot, was a native of Enterprise and earned the Medal of Honor for his actions in Vietnam. More new information tonight, this from the State Corrections Department, which has been struggling to respond to an inmate work stoppage in recent days. Many inmates stopped performing their assigned jobs in order to protest prison conditions. Now, according to the department, more and more of those inmates are back on the job. Strikes, however, continue at five male prisons across the state. Because inmate workers are necessary to running the prisons, the ADOC says it does not have the staff necessary to continue with visitation programs. Programs. So visitation at those five facilities has been canceled this weekend throughout Alabama. We talked a little bit about tourism at the top of the newscast. That memorial and that museum are a big draw in our city. People come to see it. Mm -hmm. A sold out crowd for that homecoming game. Sorry, Val. Good <laughs> Every time I talk about ASU and I look at Val, I'm yeah, like, no. I shouldn't be talking about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be a good game. And I want to see that ASU stadium sold out because that's a mm -hmm. big stadium. Mm -hmm. Huge. There. And you, you can see it driving by on the, the road right there. It's uh -huh. going to be awesome. Yeah. Beaver athlete of the week. Those guys. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I was like a little more please. I know. Sometimes they get shy and then they get used to the camera. I love watching the presentation though every week. Yeah, it's fun. Thanks Rosie. Josh is back for the final check of your forecast after the break. And thanks for joining us at six. Entertainment Tonight is coming up next. Florida's governor reassuring residents tonight help is on the way. Hurricane Ian, one of the strongest in decades, has destroyed property statewide. Good evening, I'm Mark Bullock. And I'm Valerie Lawson. The latest from Florida in a moment, but first, Ian's next move. Meanwhile, tonight we're getting a clearer picture of the damage left behind in Florida. So far, the death toll there has risen to at least 15. This is a live look over Orlando. Help is also on the way from electric cooperatives around the state. More than 2 million Floridians are in the dark tonight. Monet Stevens joins us live to continue our Team 12 coverage. 500 Red Cross volunteers are already in Florida tonight. 60 are from the Alabama 
Alabama and Mississippi regions. Mike Brown, director of Red Cross's South Alabama chapter in Mobile, says they spent today setting up long-term shelters for families who have lost everything. Many along the East Coast are preparing for more of Hurricane Ian. Yeah, we're back with Josh in a moment for a detailed look at Ian's projected path, what the storm may bring to the Atlantic coastline next. More than two and a half million customers across Florida are reported to be without electricity tonight. Some counties, including Lee County, have implemented mandatory curfews and encouraged residents to avoid roadways as crews begin to assess the damage. Josh, it sounds like we will be learning for days to come just how bad this storm was. Yeah, and I mean, uh, one thing I would point out, Sanibel Island, Florida, mm -hmm. a very big area, very heavily populated. The causeway out to it is destroyed. Right. Well, that's going to do it for WSFA 12 News at 10 o'clock. More news available at WSFA.com or on our news app. Thanks for watching. From WSFA 12 News, this is Breaking News. You are watching continuing special coverage of today's visit by President Joe Biden to Alabama. He landed at Maxwell Air Force Base just afternoon and is now in Troy, where he is at Lockheed Martin. The president is getting a tour right now of the Lockheed Martin facility, which has, by the way, produced more than 50,000 of those Javelin missiles since it opened back in the mid-1990s. It also employs approximately 600 people there in Pike County. WSFA 12 News anchor Sally Pitts is joining us live from that location and Sally we talked a little bit about how this event or this visit has been politicized by some no Republicans have decided to join the president for his visit I'm Mark Bullock we're so glad you're here for this grand tradition in Alabama politics an annual address given by the governor outlining his or her plans or agenda for the upcoming legislative session as you know the legislative session was gaveled in today this is the first day of this year's session it is the last session in Governor Kay Ivey's term so it's perhaps possible she'll talk a little bit about her accomplishments over the last four years as we know she is running for re-election She'll also be talking about her agenda, what she hopes lawmakers will be addressing in this upcoming session. One of the first things we expect to happen is a discussion about how to spend federal pandemic relief money. Alabama has already allocated some of that money to build new prisons to address concerns uh, raised by the U.S. Justice Department. Some people found that a little bit uh, controversial. The state, however, maintains that the use of that money for prison building is acceptable. But now there's a, an issue of how to spend the rest of it. And keep in mind that is one time money. So the governor is encouraging lawmakers to go ahead and get that out of the way early on. The session is now being gaveled in. That this is This joint session of the Alabama legislature will come to House order. Chamber. Doorkeeper, please admit our governor. Greta Lambert announced last week she's retiring soon from her staff positions, namely Deputy Artistic Director and Director of Education. It's hard to believe it's been nearly 40 years since she started. She and I recently took a stroll down memory lane. I was here for the very first show in this building. She's been a part of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival ever since it moved to Montgomery from Anniston in 1985. But that wasn't Greta Lambert's initial plan. I was living in New York. I'm from Birmingham. Having grown up in Alabama, Lambert was pursuing an acting career in the Big Apple. And I had to have an agent, most actors do. And the first job that they sent me on was for the Alabama Shakespeare Festival for 10 months. And I thought, no! I she took the job and surprisingly fell in love with the roles she was getting here. Among her favorites, Lady Macbeth, Blanche Dubois, and Ivy Rowe in Fair and Tender Ladies. She says it's those kinds of opportunities that kept her in Montgomery. I've grown as an actor playing the roles I've played. And I think as an artist, that's the best you can ask for in life. And that's why she says she'll always be an actor. But when it comes to her staff positions at ASF, she says it's time to step to the side. November 7th. For years, as education director, Lambert worked to expose the youngest of audiences to the joys of theater. Students who are near and dear to me who've taken camps and classes. And she coached new college graduates just embarking on their acting careers, some of whom went on to achieve major success in the world of stage and screen. I just think the 
Those jobs need somebody young and on fire. In her absence, Lambert says the creative fires will continue to burn at Alabama State Theater. There's always something in every play for every person. But she says it's up to the audience to learn, as she did, to take advantage of ASF's offerings to ensure the theater's future success. That's really what's missing is people coming back. I think the pandemic kind of scared people away and now it's time to come back and see some shows. And in ASF's next show, Greta Lambert has the starring role. The Tempest opens this Thursday, February 23rd. You can be in the audience for a special toast to Greta the following night, Friday. The show runs through March 12th. We are so lucky to have her here. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're lucky she stayed here. She's got a lot of talent. On Commerce Street, the old City Federal Savings and Loan Building, or City Fed for short, is morphing from a financial institution into a culinary destination. We knew downtown needs a new fine dining, you know, uh, establishment. Chef Eric Rivera says he chose the name Ravello's after visiting the town along the Amalfi Coast, and his menu will feature a modern take on traditional Italian favorites. Well, we will have a lot of fresh pasta. It'll all be made here in-house. But getting here was no easy feat. A multi-million dollar historic preservation project presents plenty of challenges. And when you add in pandemic related shortages of labor and supplies, this project by Vintage Hospitality Group has been delayed by more than six months. You know, you could not have a nail that you specifically need or mortar or cement. This is the group's third restaurant in Montgomery. They also own Vintage Cafe and Vintage Year in Old Cloverdale. And soon they'll open a fourth venue just down the street along Alabama's riverfront. Developers purchased the sandbar from the city in Riverfront Park. The plan is to draw visitors to the area, not just with food and drinks, but entertainment as well. The hope is to open in about a month, the same time frame as Ravello's, which also features an adjacent ballroom and meeting space to further complement ongoing downtown development. We've been running because we're at the other end of the fairgrounds right. to get over here to the money machine. Our producer told us you have two minutes to get from the truck where they were making chips to this thing. <laughs> And this is where you can register for a chance to pull as much money out of the air as possible. And we have our winner. We have a winner for WSFA 12 News. We had a little contest going on. And this is Trisha. How excited are you? Oh, I'm very excited. Hey, I'm going to tell you, it's harder than it looks. You got to try. You got to really try to pull every little bit out because it moves so fast. Do you have a technique? Have you been practicing? I've been practicing. I've been practicing. <laughs> how, how does one practice? I don't know. <laughs> Just grab, grab it. Grab and yeah. stuff it, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, if you want to check out the money machine, we're inside Garrett Coliseum here at the fairgrounds. So this is where you would come to uh, check it out. It is night one of the Alabama National Fair, a nearly 70 year tradition in Montgomery. And the highlight of the first day had to be this. Watch. My co-anchor Sally Pitts is with the sharks. She is in the water, people. I feel great, Mark. I'm not scared at all. It's really cool in here. That's right, our Sally Pitts volunteered to swim with these nurse sharks, which are part of the fair's daily shark encounter shows. It was all broadcast live during our five o'clock newscast. The shark encounter is one of many attractions at the fair this year. Here's more from Sally on some of the other big draws. Sally showed us a little of that money machine. Take a look. This is Patricia having her turn. She was the winner of our money machine contest here at WSFA 12 <laughs> News. <laughs> she says she walked away with $86 after all of this. Not bad, Patricia. <laughs> if you're headed to the fair, you can register for a chance inside the money machine at Garrett Coliseum.